Last on the channel, we saw this structure right here, but now there's two of them. This one is machined a lot more precisely. It actually is compatible with a glare shield, which is kind of a big deal. It has proper mounts for the panel and it fits better in the simulator. If we fit this piece into its slot here and drop it, it's not tight enough of a fit for it to actually structurally be together. It's depending on this screw right here. And even then, it has a lot of wobble. It's very shaky and it doesn't really work very well. But when I redid it, we can pull out pieces and even without screws, they don't fall out. They're pressed into there. This is super awesome because it's not shaky at all. If it's assuming it's properly like bolted down, but there's a lot more rigidity. If we do a side by side comparison, there's a lot of movement here. Not a whole lot of movement here. Honestly, part of its wiggling is because it's on an uneven surface. But this is a lot more sturdy. And so now we're just gonna swap out all of the systems here and put them into this new system. I actually really like this system because it's four screws connecting this. It's a strong joint, but also it's just four screws connecting it. So I can easily move this to and from systems. All right, now I just screw these screws in however we need to. I'm gonna model it in real life later. Then I think everything is good to go. This is pretty crazy. Now it's time to unscrew this and screw the new one in its place. Out with the old and in with the new. Look at this, wow. So this is about actually two inches taller than the old version. The old version would have been about to here or something. It's two inches taller so that this dimension right here is accurate to the floor. If we measure from the floor to here, it's 25 and a half inches. So this is good. Now I have the panel. I have some places to kind of mount the glare shield. We can design the glare shield and go from there with our solution. This is pretty wicked. I'm kind of excited. Really excited actually. This is the latest addition to my Cessna 172 project. It's a CNC milled panel, but it's updated. It has this geometry up here, the shape of the top, a little bit more realistic, and it has the support panel section right here, this outside I originally cut it with a jigsaw, but that didn't cut it. <laughs> uh, so it's now CNC milled. That gives it a nicer finish. And it has these new holes right here. These holes let air valves through so I can have air conditioning in my simulator. And also, uh, the yoke grommet wasn't doing so hot with its previous design. So I fixed that. Now it should be updated and all ready to go. So the latest news is that I'm starting to use instead of that unscrewing it every time, I'm just gonna use a wing nut, something like this, and then you just pull it off. Easier said than done, I drilled the holes too precisely, which isn't precise enough, which is kind of a weird thing to think about. We can test this out if I have this drill and I just expand the holes ever so slightly. Now, if I put this onto the panel and slide it into place, the pin locks there and I have a wing nut right here. Now I can go flick this wing nut to take the panel off, pop it off, pop the new one on, find the wing nut and put it back on. 
and you can even use a washer if you want it on more securely. I'm choosing to go without a washer just for uh, speed. Now on the other side, we can do the same thing. Now that it's all tightened up, we can actually fix the base with some angle brackets. Always is a changing, cheated by a fox, swallowed by a whale. That's the story of my life, voodoo. That's the story of my life. How typical, we're gonna start out by marking the midpoint. So this is 34 and, so basically 34 inches. Half of 34 is 17. I hope that's right. We'll go with that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So make a mark at the 17, right there, measure twice, cut once. I just say that, I don't actually measure twice. It just sounds smart, but I'm too lazy to do it. Fine, I'll measure twice. Okay, 17, and basically 17. There we go. Now we know that for, cer for certain, this is lined up and ready to go. Usually I would line everything up and clamp it, but I'm kind of in a mood, so I'm just gonna go freestyle. Wow, these brackets bring back memories. They're the same brackets I used on my first ever flight simulator. Ah, good times. So now everything is who dandy, who dan da dan da. I'm, I'm running out of expressions for awesome. But everything is measured, ready. Um, the only thing that isn't like totally centered and stuff is uh, these two legs. I can move them and make fun horn sounds. Man, I'm a musician. I haven't lost it. <laughs> Another center we need to find. Here to here, 41, and we'll just call it an eighth. That's 20.5 and a sixteenth. Now, measure twice because we're on TV. No other reason. And that lines up. So, this is the center, and then from here, we need these both to be the same distance. So I can set one of these distances and set the other one the same. Oop, that one is off. That's not good, so we'll move this one in, in a little. And then when it's moved in, right here, where did I erase my line? Curse you. Just draw another one. It's okay, it's kind of arbitrary anyways. So I'm basically finding a point where these are all equal to each other and where it's all lining up and stuff. Just whatever you do, make sure you have a panel in that's the right size so you can put panels in without having it like squeezed too much where it's all off. So make sure you have a panel in while you fit these sides. Oh yeah, and it'd probably be a good idea to mark out where these are, like when it's at six to 17 inches, because mm -hmm. they might slide a little and make some beautiful music. But you can just go like this, and then if it slides, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can line it back up, screw it in,
That sounded scary, but it wasn't. Don't worry. Okay, maybe it was. Just a little. Awesome. Now erase the line because it looks a little crooked and that's not what we want, right? I can finally lift it up without having to worry about it like falling apart. That's awesome. Super cool. Now I can put on my old panels. Soon I'll revamp them, put in some new panels, but the old panels will do for now. Yeah. Aha. Here we go. New CNC mill panel. We have a hole for the radio stack. Um, so this is getting more real every month. By yeah, I only have a time to work on it like twice a month. <laughs> but this is super exciting. We have all the panels. Oh, my 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 um, spider senses are tingling. Whew. And with this new new panel, we can finally have the grommet. So we'll have, yeah, it's somewhere over there. We'll have the yoke system that much more accurately modeled and it'll, it'll just be a field day. Man, this is exciting. It doesn't look like anything's happened, but it feels like a lot has. Maybe I'm just exaggerating. Oh well. And again, it's super simple to remove the panels. Just remove two nuts. And slide it off. Okay, this one might need a little persuasion. Arr. Oh, I didn't drill it enough. You, you should be able to slide it off. And you just slide it off. Easy as that. Then we have this panel, we can light against the wall. And switch it with another panel. So you can have like an old looking Cessna 172 for, for the good old days. A newer looking analog panel. And then an even newer looking Garmin G1000 unit thing. Okay, these are all the same panels, but I've I'm, I'm not very good at making them, so I've made like four. <sighs> yeah. This is revision two. Wow. I've made a lot of panels. Dang.